Hey guys, and welcome to the second installment of the Friday Film Room here at Hashtag Sports. Uh, we're going to try to bring, break down a few things for you here. Uh, in the Miami game, that was a little bit concerning uh, to start the game for Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills offense. <laughs> What we have here is the second play of the game. It, obviously, second and two, 1444 left. This was the throw to Beasley that was just behind him that Allen had. You can see he's got three wide receivers to the top of his screen. He has Singletary, who he's going to move over. He moves Singletary over to his left. He's going to run an RPO to, to Singletary. So he gets the ball. He fakes it to Singletary. Now, he has a bunch of different options here. But you can see when I show the, the tight cam, you're going to see where Josh Allen is actually looking. Once he fakes it to Singletary, he's immediately throwing it right to Beasley. Beasley's not even looking. His head's not even turned yet. Right here. His head is not even turned yet. Now, Allen has a few options on this play. He ends up throwing this ball right behind Beasley. When you look at the tight shot, you can see a couple more things that happen in this play that are very, very interesting. So Josh Allen moves Singletary over. He's looking to his left. That's where his main receivers are. You can see it from his head. He's looking to his left. The reason why this is an RPO is because uh, you start to see the, the behavior of the lineman. As this play progresses and Allen gets the snap, you see right, off the, right out of the gate, boom, right here, right in the middle, you got Morse and Feliciano are pulling, and Ford is blocking down on this defensive tackle right here. He blocks down, those two guys pull. You see the tight end start to reach inside here as well. On the other side of the line, Spain's going head up. Spain's going to go head up, and Dawkins is going to go head up. So this is blocked out really nicely. Allen, as soon as his head, his head goes immediately to that linebacker. You can see him directly looking right at this. This linebacker is starting to read the play. That's what He wants to stuff it. But the interesting thing about it is, Allen could give this ball to Singletary without any harm or any foul. As this tight end on the left side blocks down and Ford blocks down, this end comes around. He's going to be taken out by both the pulling guard, who is Feliciano, and the Morse. Morse can come around inside. So as they pull, you see Feliciano take the first guy. Morse is just going to go around him to try to take this guy or the linebacker, whoever shows first. And then it's one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back here on the left hand side it would not have been a bad play as you could see you could see more start to leak out around the side right there right where the play was going Allen chose not to do that now if we go back to the beginning you can see Allen's head just watch his head throughout the whole play he's reading this middle linebacker on the RPO so as he gets the ball he snap, snaps it to him he looks he sees that linebacker start to fly out of there he's like oh I gotta go back side I gotta go back side so because that linebacker vacated the zone, he thinks Beasley's going to be open right in the middle. And if he, ta he waits a couple extra seconds, perhaps Beasley would open up. However, if we look at the wide shot of it, it didn't seem like Beasley was the guy to go through here. And I know I'm nitpicking, but this is these are some of the things that are concerning. As soon as he fakes it, you have John Brown running a slant, and you have Beasley running a slant, and then Williams is running the out. Okay. If they're playing a uh, typical zone now, this this corner or this safety right here is starting to go back, so they're creeping up. It looks like a cover three look, which means the flat over here is going to be open. So as he fakes it, and you look, you can see Williams. If he throws it to Williams right now, he's got a blocker right here, and he just has to beat this guy to the edge. So that is an option that Allen could have had, but he got the ball out of his hands really quick. And ended up throwing it behind Beasley. Okay, so the very next play is the first and ten after all that uh, chaos got sorted out with the disqualification by Christian Wilkins. Uh, the Buffalo Bills are at the 48-yard line. They have a three wide receiver set. And it looks it appears that the Miami Dolphins are in a cover two on the back end here. If you have a little bit more savvy quarterback, there's sometimes these zones right here will be wide open, right near the 40-yard line where they are. So from the 40, where the numbers are to the sideline are going to be open. On this type of a defense so Allen he gets the ball and as this play starts to develop you see it for top the front right receiver the, the receiver up on the line is going to run a clear and then Duke Williams is going to come in right behind him it seems that Allen though wants to feed this ball to Beasley he runs a little little hitch up route right there boom 
This ball got to, got batted up in the air, but Beasley was open. But if you take a look at it, right down here, this is the first read. This has to be his first read. And if he held on to it a little bit longer, this corner down here that's playing Brown, his job is to funnel Brown inside. However, he funnels him inside just for a bit, and Brown ends up breaking back out to the outside. He gets him, and he gets immediately back to the outside. Wide open right here. He hits this. This could have been a huge play for the Buffalo Bills right out of the gate early. Now, when we go to the tight shot, end up getting batted in the air, and then... Um, and be an incomplete pass. So as soon as Allen gets the ball, his, his his head immediately locks over here. It immediately locks to his left. He's not even looking for Brown. He's not even going to be paying attention to him. So as this progresses, you see it almost looks like he kind of peeks at Duke. Duke's coming out across. This linebacker is going to be responsible for him. If he hits him right now, he's got at least... I don't know, 8 to 10 yards before that linebacker can do anything and Duke can get the ball and do something with it. Look, he's wide open. This linebacker is way off now. Duke's all by himself right in the middle. The tight end ran the clearing route, so Duke can sneak underneath, and he wanted to force this ball into Beasley. As I played it through, as soon as he gets the ball and he looks left, he is dead staring at Beasley the whole time. As he goes through that, easy for the lineman to get his hand up in the air and block that ball and knock it down. All right, now we come to a play. Uh, after a holding call on a uh, Josh Allen run, we come up to the next play. This is the one that went for DeMarco for a long gain. So if we play it through, Allen runs play action. He throws it to DeMarco in the flat. He makes a guy miss, and he's off to the races for 27 yards. Solid play, very solid play. A very good read by Allen on this play. On So if we run it back to the beginning, Bills are in a uh, I formation offset, two wide receivers. As he runs the play action... The goal of this play action, as op as Allen opens up to his right, is to try to get the linebackers or anybody in here to try to move that way. That's his goal. His goal is to get them to move over there. He sees off the snap, this cornerback is staring dead at him. This cornerback is staring dead at him, and you have one high safety. So this looks like to be a man-free look. Possibly a blitz, who knows. The Miami Dolphins end up bringing five. So Allen actually reads this very nice. You have a clearing route right in here. Because if this is playing, if these guys are playing man, this middle linebacker right here is responsible for DeMarco. That is his guy. So because the tight end in here is running a clearing route through there, it's gonna be he's got to work his way through all those bodies that are going on. See, he even gets caught up right here. So Allen, seeing that, runs the play action and he immediately swings his head over to DeMarco. So he knew he was going there right away. As we go take a take a look at the tight shot, he sees all these guys up at the line. He's going through his calls. He runs the play action to Gore. And this linebacker, this linebacker who's responsible for DeMarco, he's responsible for him right there. He's got to work his way through all these bodies, and he can't work his way through it. He has, he has to go behind. It was a great job by the tight end. So he has to go around. Allen immediately, after he does the play action, swings his head right over there and throws it right to DeMarco. All right, so it's a second and 10 at the Miami 21. There's 11.08 left. They have two wide receivers stacked at the top of your screen. They have one wide receiver down here, and they have a tight end who's going to shift over. Now, this this may this may look very minute. However, the biggest thing about, that this does is when the tight end starts to go and shift on the other side of the formation, this defender goes with him. That's a tip-off for Allen that it could be man. So he looks, this defender goes along with the tight end that could be man. You have one high safety again, once again, possibly a blitz, possibly pressure is going to be coming somewhere. Allen ends up faking to Gore. The, uh, the jet motion comes across with McKenzie. He fakes it to Gore. Now, this is a typical play at the Buffalo Bills run rule. They'll take this tight end. He'll sneak behind the line and try to go in the flat. As he runs the play action to Gore... That tight end ends up, ends up being held. And this is one of the, the play designs that I was not very fond of from Dable because the jet motion doesn't do anything to help you on this play. Unless this jet motion right here, he wanted to run the wheel route up the sidelines and hit McKenzie. If he throws it now, McKenzie can catch it. If he lets it go out of his hands right now, and possibly that was the design of the play. I don't know. But if he lets it go right now, McKenzie has it, and he has all of this field over here to work with with a touchdown. Allen holds on to it a little too long, possibly looking to see if the tight end will open up short. 
He doesn't open up. There's a defender that comes in and race, racing right at him. He's got to get the ball out of his hands, so he throws it over McKenzie's head toward the end zone. Once again, we see the tight end go across the field. Allen's looking at that. He should be looking at that. That has to be man. So the jet motion comes across with McKenzie. He runs play action with Gore to your right. And this is why. You can see a little bit better in the tight. This is the guy that the tight end has to beat. However, because this jet motion is over there, this end has to respect that jet motion. So as he comes across the formation, he fakes it to Gore. This end does not crash as, as he would if it was a run. He doesn't crash down. He stays there. What happens? Once, Allen, once he knows Allen doesn't hand it off, he is in prime position to cover this tight end coming in the flat. So the, the tight end can't be open at all. The Buffalo Bills ran a similar play, as we'll see here, against the Tennessee Titans. You have your tight end at the top of your screen. Allen, from the shotgun this time, will fake it to Gore going left. The reason why you want to run that fake is you want to get the linebackers and anybody else that's going to crash on that side of the line. The tight end is going to try to leak out over here. That was Sweeney. He ended up um, not catching this pass. But if you get all the motion and all the action going that way, you can, you can almost leak Sweeney out. This receiver down here is going to run off, so you can have the flat route open. Initially, it's not open because the defender over the top, this defender right here was playing in the box, and it ended up being covered. Allen ends up you know, pump faking, defender leaves his feet, so Sweeney is allowed to get open, but initially this play wasn't open at all. So if we go to the tight version of it, you, you want to get all the flow going to the left, and Sweeney over here, the tight end, is going to leak out on the right. So the defensive end right here in the Miami game, he ends up staying put because of the jet motion. However, this defender, because he runs that fake to Gore on the inside, and you got Duke Williams there, he's, he's crashing down hard. He wants to try to get Gore. The second defender is what throws a wrinkle in that play. But Sweeney's coming across. You look, boom. Right there. Or he can go second level to, to Lee Smith, but he, the defender leaves his feet. He throws it to Sweeney. Sweeney ends up dropping it, but um, that was the same type of play that he tried to run in the Miami game that it just didn't pan out because he had the jet motion there. So here's a third and ten play. Now this was one of the the big things that uh, we talked about on Hashtag Sports on an episode uh, with the four things that are disappointing with Dave o that were coming about because of knowing your opponent and what your opponent may do. Now, if we take a look at this play, it's a third and ten. You can see it almost looks like mass chaos on the Miami side. Miami looks like there's just a bunch of chaos going on over there. They're just hopping around. No one's really got their hand in the dirt. They're walking around trying to confuse the offensive line on who's coming, who's not. They end up bringing up an all-out blitz on this play. There's no, but there's no defenders in the back here. Allen knows all these guys are coming. So, to circumvent that. The Buffalo Bills have routes. They end up getting jammed at the line. However, they have some long developing routes on the right side where Allen's looking. On the back side, they run two crossers. They try to run two crossers. Allen ends up trying to get this ball away. But that was a third and ten as the Buffalo Bills were driving to try to score. When you look at the tight version of this, you get to see a little bit better. You see all these defenders up in the box, hopping around. No one really knows who they're blocking, what's going on. They end up bringing an all-out rush against Allen. The reason why this is so frustrating is this play happened on a third and long. When we talked about it on the episode, we talked about behind schedule. They're behind schedule at third and ten. The reason why it is so frustrating is because just a couple of weeks prior, they played the New England Patriots. Now, Brian Flores came from New England. It seems like he watched the film of the New England Patriots versus the Buffalo Bills. And in that game, six different times, the Buffalo Bills had a third and long situation. And this was a similar type situation that the New England Patriots ran. I'll give you an example. This was a third, the first third and long that they had. There was a third and 10 of the Buffalo 24. He only gets sacked for nine yards. There was a defensive holding on play on it but if you look at the defensive alignment by the Patriots it looks eerily similar to what happened against Miami Allen ends up getting sacked there was a defensive holding like I said but if we look at the tight version of it you look here 
see all these defenders up. There's only one defender with his hand in the dirt. All these guys are up, walking around, moving around, trying to confuse the offense. It looks very similar to what happened to Allen against Miami. Another reason why this could be so frustrating with Dable and his play calling on third and long is when you take a look at the Miami Dolphins just a week prior against the <clears throat> the Washington Redskins. I'm sorry. This was a third and seven at the at the Washington 31 yard line. You happen to notice what the defenders are doing as I as I slowly go through this? It looks like mass chaos. One guy with his hand in the dirt. All the other defenders are moving around, and they end up bringing a bunch of pressure. You look, you see one defender with his hand in the dirt. All these guys are hopping around. This was just the week before. This is just the week before on the third and long. Here's another play in the New England game. This is a third and 14 now. So you take a look at the defensive alignment for the New England Patriots. One guy, hand in the dirt. Everyone else is up walking around. Trying to confuse the offensive line, trying to confuse Allen. If we take a look at the tight version of it, if we take a look at the tight version of it, once again you see one guy hand in the dirt. All of these guys are up, trying to confuse the offensive line. Who's coming? Who's not? Are they blitzing? Are they not blitzing? Allen ends up throwing this ball over John Brown's head, but you start to see very, you start to see some similarities between that defense. And the defense that Allen had to see on a third and long. Another similar type play, we look at, now it's a third and 11. The, the Buffalo Bills have the ball in Miami territory once again later in the game. One guy in the front, hand in the dirt. Brian Flores came from New England. Obviously, he studied the New England tape on how to confuse Allen on third and long. All these guys are hopping around. Now, Brian Dable's solution to this was to throw a quick quick hitter to McKenzie to try to get him out in space. However, it didn't manifest that way and it ended up being a very short game. So as I, you know, I, I realized that this, um, this Friday film room is a little bit uh, all over the place. I do apologize for that, but it was just some things that we had seen in the game that we wanted to bring to light with you guys with some of the play calls and, or some of the schemes that are drawn up. There's just some things that are concerning there that uh, I saw on film that I wanted to show you guys just to see what I'm seeing. So in the comment section, uh, leave what you guys, uh, leave everything you guys want to hear. Or if there's anything else you want me to break down, just let me know. But uh, that's what I got for tonight. So.